Okay, the concept of users and phones within the Shortel architecture. So as you can see through quick look, we've got a headquarters server named Middle Earth. And Middle Earth is a site that contains an, an SG40. <clears throat> and uh, there's also a subsidiary site, a daughter site, if you will, to Middle Earth called Iridor. That's another site. So here's the deal. In Shortel, if you go over to IP phones, you will find uh, IP phone address map where basically we have the opportunity to associate a subnet with a particular location or site. Phone boots up, gets an IP address from the DHCP services at that site. And we would put the range here, 172.16.1.0, 172, 16, 1 .0, 172 16, 1 and uh, <clears throat> put a, um, we can even associate an emergency phone number for presentations to the, to the uh, 911 folks. But the purpose of the map is specifically to cause the phone to be assigned to a particular site. Now, having said that, in your Cisco world, phones register with the server, the Cisco call manager. Phones come up. So I'll cover it when we go there, and they register with the server. The server disappears. There should be a backup server. If there is no backup server, um, your Cisco phone becomes a rock. Now, in the case of Shortel, though this administration is being taken place on the headquarters server, if this server disappeared, Shortel phones would continue to operate. That is because Shortel phones actually register with a hardware switch. In this case, at this little lab environment, we've got this SG48, this switch here. Now, this switch has some resources assigned for phones. And it has um, eight ports that could uh, be other than uh, IP phones. And for each, each one of these, I give up to some other function. I lose five IP phones. Different story. What's essential here, the takeaway here, is that phones register with this hardware appliance. Uh, Cisco World, is it called a media gateway? It is a media gateway, but phones register here. So if we actually go look at our in individual IP phones, uh, we'll see that when they boot up, we see the MAC address of the phone, we see the site the phone is assigned to, the switch, Okay, not the server, but the hardware appliance that this phone is registered to. If this short tail headquarters server goes down, phones will continue to function. They're registering with that hardware appliance. We've got the MAC address and, of course, the um, IP address of that phone. We can also see things like the, the phone type. So when, the, when a phone comes up in the short tail world, it registers with a switch, take away point one, take away point two. It's really just what we might call an anonymous phone. It will not have an extension. It cannot be called. Key distinction between Shortel and Cisco, and we'll cover that in the Cisco piece. The phone is here. So let's go add a user. And uh, I'm going to add a new user at site Middle Earth. Now, this is probably the easiest part of a short tail deployment is to go ahead and add a Gandalf gray. Yeah, and I don't like extension 223. I want him to have extension 215. Okay, by default, he's got an extension in the mailbox. If I go ahead and save this now, that's it. That's all it took to add a user in short tail. There are obviously other things, characteristics of the user that I can change. 
but at the moment I added a name and an extension number and saved it, that user was created in the Shortel solution, not only as a user in the system, he now has a voice mailbox, he's a part of the uh, online directory, uh, instantly available when I hit save. Now what about the phone? We go down here to primary phone, we'll see that he can use any IP phone. I could have assigned him to a, a port on a switch if he were an analog phone. I could give him just have him live in the server, but I want him to have a phone. Now what you'll do here is hit this and you will get a drop down list of all the available phones. Clearly during the deployment process, a key aspect of the deployment is to get a floor map in which we can associate a user to a specific location because the phones are deployed and we want to know the MAC address at that location so we can assign Gandalf here. The minute I do this and save it, the phone that was previously registered, if I now go back to IP phones, I should see that that uh, phone is now, there we go, phone, Middle Earth, switch, MAC address, and it is currently assigned to Gandalf the Grey. So that's how it's done in short term. Quickly in the uh, Cisco world, things are a little bit different. Some of the concepts are the same, but a key difference here is that phones, when they boot up, they register with a Cisco call manager, a server. That server becomes that phone's call manager. If that server goes away, the phone becomes a rock. That's why a best practice deployment in Cisco requires at least two servers. You would do the same, and uh, you do it differently, but you would do the same kind of redundancy planning in your short tail deployment. The key difference here is that phones in the Cisco world can come alive, they boot up in the system, and they then uh, become registered with the call manager and appear under devices on the phone. Now, having said that, the phone will appear and if we had set up auto registration, which we typically would, the phone will boot up, it will automatically receive an extension number, a partition for, for uh, short telephones, that's like giving it a class of service that set what it can do. But that phone is alive on the network, it can be called. It doesn't have to have a user associated with it. So that's a cultural difference between the two architectures. So I can see here, I've got several phones registered. There's a 7941. These are Cisco um, soft phones. And I've got a SIP device here. And so let's pick on one of these phones. I can see at the high level here, some of the things uh, with regard to the status of the phone. This phone just registered. And bring it up so you can see what goes on in this area. Now, the phone came up, it was part of a partition uh, for auto-registered phones that kind of set its calling permissions. And then you click here on line one and give it an extension number. And I changed its, uh, um, again, short telephones will recognize this as kind of a user group thing, but in the Cisco world, phones uh, have a partition which determine you know, what what, what they can call, or who, you know, how, how they can be called. The route partition in this case was California Phones. Uh, I set up its uh, extension number here, and, uh, and apparently I want this to appear on several other phones. So I have associated devices. You can see here that we set up the directory number. Again, what's important to note is we're doing this to a phone instrument, to a device, not to a user. Um, there's a lot of information about um, how this device wants to handle different conditions. Um, typically, this is set up to, you know, this would go to voicemail. You'll see uh, about monitoring. 
you'll see some of the information that determines how this phone is going to display its number to the outside world, things like its, its phone mask. So I've got it set up here, 760918, and the X's will be filled in with 6751. So this covers, gives you a feel for how you add a phone to the Cisco system. Now keep in mind that the phone has been created, it's been assigned, it's registered, and it now is extension 6751, and other phones in, the, in this partition can call it. So now let's look at users. We'll go up here under user management, end user, and let's find our users. You can see here that we have a, a, a bunch of users defined. And what we want to do is go ahead and add a new user. So I'm going to give it a user ID. And in this case, it's going to be our friend Gandalf. Gray. I have a password, pin, I can go ahead and put in the phone number, or I can put in information that is really um, normally derived from LDAP. Um, we're not going to give this person an extension. Any information I put in here is just, you know, reference for the directory. Uh, here is where we're going to say uh, available devices. And we're going to select our phone. Just giving you a feel for what, uh, what options exist here. Let me go ahead and save this guy. So Gandalf has now been created. So I want to get some available phones, device association, find my devices, yeah, and I want to put them here on this phone. So at this point, we've associated Gandalf uh, to a particular phone. We've set up an end user. I'll go back there, go looking for him. You'll see that uh, Gandalf now exists. And Gandalf should be associated now with a particular phone. He can be associated with multiple phones. So the difference here, again, is that in the Cisco architecture, phones uh, are entities that can live have an extension number, be usable, and do not necessarily have to be associated with a particular user. You do associate users with phones, but I think you can see that the concept is, is uh, different than in the world of uh, the short tail world. It's not a matter of what's better, who's, who does it better, what goes on. It's just the way it is, guys. So I hope you have found this informative. And I certainly thank you for viewing.